How did Quest Nutrition do in its first activity being a part of a publicly traded portfolio? In this video, I will break down that financial data, but more importantly, provide insights into the protein bar maker's future moves. Quest Nutrition's new owner, the Simply Good Foods Company, is not necessarily a household name yet, but it might be in the future if they continue to raise guidance like they did after this first quarter's report. And just to recap for everybody, the Simply Good Foods Company, the portfolio is a few different um, consumer brand names that you guys might know. First one is Atkins Nutritionals, so the Atkins diet, uh, the products that are associated with that. Simply Protein, which is a small, small amount of the revenue, and then Quest Nutrition. Now let's run down some of the financial numbers. I also kind of clipped a few of the slides from the presentation, the quarterly presentation for the fiscal quarter one of 2020. Just so you guys can get a little bit of visuals around what I'm talking about. It helps you guys out a little bit, I think. So for the first quarter of 2020 for the Simply Good Foods Company, if you guys would like to follow along with them in the financial markets, it is ticker SMPL. So their revenue for this quarter, the first quarter of their fiscal year was $152.2 million. That was up 25.8% year over year. And just to kind of break that out between the two brands, Atkins, the legacy business, was up 11.7%. And then the contribution from Quest's 24 days in the quarter, that revenue that was associated with that helped the growth rate 14.1%. So like I mentioned, Quest Nutrition, the transaction, when they did acquire them, it's taken some time, obviously, to completely close. And... In this quarter, there was 24 days of activity of revenue from Quest Nutrition. So they didn't have the full 91 days. Um, so it was only about 26% of this first fiscal quarter. Based on that contribution percentage of growth for the Simply Good Foods company, that came out to a little over $17 million in the last 24 days of this fiscal quarter. So if we were just to take some quick calculations and kind of drill that down to like an average day and then times it by the 91, You'd be looking at Quest Nutrition for this past fiscal quarter of somewhere around $64.8 million. But luckily, the Simply Good Foods Company was smart enough to put some pro forma, um, non-audited type of numbers in the financial reports. I can get the actual number of Quest Nutrition's uh, revenue for last year, even though a lot of it was not associated with the Simply Good Foods Company. And for that revenue, the net sales for Quest Nutrition over the first quarter of 2020's fiscal year that they are now associated with, with the Simply Good Foods Company, that is the quarter that ended uh, November 30th, 2019. Just to give you guys a little bit of a sense if you're in the active nutrition market and you can kind of see where their break is and how that associates with New Year's resolutionists and all those types of things. But that net sales number for Quest Nutrition was actually drastically higher than what I just mentioned with taking just average day sales amount of the last 24 days. Quest Nutrition's net sales number for the quarter was actually $85.5 million. And they also kind of broke some numbers out if Quest Nutrition was a part of the company last year. So give you guys a year over year kind of perspective here just to see how Quest Nutrition is doing based on the same period of time last year. So for the 2019 fiscal quarter one, they had about $69 million Quest Nutrition had. And then if you think about what I just said about quarter one of 2020, you had $85.5 million. So that growth rate year over year would have been 23.9%. So very healthy growth rate, especially for a mature active nutrition brand in the market that has a good amount of distribution scale, also a hero skew, the Quest Bar, that is kind of in, I would consider more late cycle within the overall growth phases. Now let's look at the last 12 months of Quest sales channel and the kind of like product activity and compare that to the last report of similar numbers that I could find from some of the presentations and things from the acquisition that Simply Good Foods Company made in the late part of 2019. So 
68% of Quest Nutrition's revenue is from the Quest Bar. Like I said, that is their hero skew. That is the namesake around Quest Nutrition. That was exactly the same. 9% of chips, again, the same as the last that I could find. 8% cookies, similar as well. 5% powders, and that was down 1%, but from some of the comparative numbers that I kind of looked at, that would be probably a rounding number, a rounding difference. And then they had 10%, which was kind of all the other kind of products that are part of Quest Nutrition. Now, transitioning into like sales by channel, there was a little bit more movement here. So you're starting to see some jockeying in terms of strategy and, and where Quest Nutrition and possibly Simply Good Foods Company thinks this brand could be best positioned at. 24% of Quest Nutrition's revenue comes from the grocery channel. That was down 1% from the last report that I could find. 23% of it comes from mass retailers. That was down 5% from last time. 22% comes from digital. That was up 5%, 18% of specialty, which is flat, 10% of convenience or C stores, that's up 1%. You had 2% drug stores, which was up 2%, which makes me think that this was previously kind of put into the mass section. So that might've been where the variance comes in here. And then they had 1% club channel, which was down 1%. And most of the report broke down in terms of sales channel, there wasn't much commentary or at least the type of commentary that had any material negative or downside type of commentary other than the specialty channel. And this was very similar to other active nutrition portfolios, talking about bell, bell ring brands, or if we're talking about Glambia or a number of other ones, they all kind of are saying the same things that specialty retail is extremely tough right now. You have store closures, you have foot traffic down, Quest Nutrition was flat. That was not down comparable to a lot of the other portfolios that I mentioned before, but it's something to pay attention to, especially on the margin side. If Quest Nutrition wants to continue to keep that top line revenue, they're going to probably have to discount more. So let's just kind of jump into the margin side real quick so you guys can understand maybe where that's at. The gross profit margin of the Simply Good Foods Company portfolio as a whole was 40.9%. That was down 2% year over year. They highlighted a few different reasons why the margin losses, the percentage losses were both on the gross and the net side. The actual gross profit dollars and, and net profit dollars were obviously up because they're adding another asset like Quest Nutrition, but just the percentages on both sides were down. So they're saying that this was from an increase in selling and marketing expenses due to the inclusion of Quest and also some timing around the legacy Atkins advertising expense. There was also a considerable amount of general and administrative expenses as a result of the inclusion of Quest. Also again, timing of higher legacy Atkins incentive compensation. There was some integration expenses and business transaction costs that came with the acquisition of Quest Nutrition. So those will drop off as the Quest Nutrition name gets um, integrated into the overall Simply Good Foods portfolio. Now jumping over to the other main brand within the Simply Good Foods company, the Atkins Nutritional name, they saw solid growth within their bars and their confections, but they did see a slight reduction in their RTD beverages, their protein beverage line. They're saying a lot of that is coming from just increased competition that's coming into the market in that side of things. I've mentioned this on, on a number of different videos that though there's less competitors overall than maybe ready to mix powders or capsules and pills, you have a lot of like major brands that are now jumping into this space. That's because there's some more line time and manufacturing that's starting to get uh, put into place in the United States. And, and because of that, you have more availability of these brands to do some product development and create some products that fit there. Now within Atkins Nutritionals, because it's kind of like a keto line, you're seeing brands that already have maybe some of these ready to drink protein beverages, then kind of fragment their offerings and offer a keto beverage. So you're seeing that with SlimFast Keto, which is owned by Glambia. They've talked extensively around how great that's doing in market right now. And then also another name that kind of dropped one recently is Zone Perfect, the kind of the zone diet that has like a keto line, which 
might not be something that people are really paying attention to, but in terms of the same mass retailers and grocery stores that Atkins is competing in, those are names that are there and they've been in store for a while. People know them and people buy them. So that's competition that needs to be kind of paid attention to and Simply Good Foods Company made mention of that in this report. Now, Atkins Nutritionals, though they've been doing extremely well over the last so many quarters that they've been public under the Simply Good Foods Company, they are still kind of going through this reinvention phase. The Atkins diet as a whole is kind of getting reintroduced to the American public. You have Rob Lowe being kind of their front man on this. They have doubled down on that. They've seen good traction on those advertisements. That campaign is called Any Questions. You guys want to kind of YouTube those and try to pay and and see what those are about. But they just kind of ran some new ones, I think, within the last month. They've kind of continued with that. And I know they have about $2.7 million in celebrity endorsers and ambassador expense over this next year that they have to book. I don't know what that is to Rob Lowe. That might be, you know, we might get a million bucks out of that or something. They might be earmarking some other things for Quest Nutrition, which I'll talk about a little bit later here. But the Atkins Nutritional brand is still trying to reset themselves within the public. And the way that they're doing it, if you do watch the commercials, are, are kind of interesting because I remember back when the Atkins Nutritionals diet was first being popularized around like maybe the late 90s, the early 2000s. And I remember it being a very difficult diet for adults to follow. I was not an adult at that time and not really following any diets. So that was not something that I really cared too much about. But I remember parents or parents' friends talking about the Atkins diet and it being difficult because of how unique the way it was to kind of eat comparable to maybe the regular American diet or the balanced diet. But now... Atkins Nutritional is positioning this as easier, less restrictive lifestyle diet than the overall keto diet, which it kind of stems from. The keto diet at its core is probably a lot more restrictive, a lot more tough to follow. So they're saying, hey, if you can't really follow the keto diet and you're struggling with the keto diet, here's the Atkins diet. This was less restrictive. This is a lot easier for you to follow. And maybe you need to relook at the Atkins diet. You shouldn't have the same perception of what it was almost 20 years ago. So along with the growth of the Atkins Nutritionals line, and then obviously them being very confident in the Quest Nutrition acquisition, and that being a pretty good growth rate in this first quarter, even though it was only 24 days of the last quarter that is involved in the Simply Good Foods public filing, they actually raised guidance. They raised their net sales guidance for the year. That is now going to be somewhere around $850 million to $870 million in net sales. So all is good and well and feeling pretty confident that they have the right vision. They have the right strategies with Quest Nutrition. Let's kind of talk about that a little bit. Let's see what Simply Good Foods company thinks about themselves, where they're at, their vision. They see themselves as kind of this better for you CPG portfolio of the future. They don't want to be attached to a lot of these like legacy categories. They want to be well positioned within categories that leverage mega consumer trends in nascent, you know, kind of promising newer underpenetrated categories. Nutritional snacking category growth continues to outpace most legacy center store categories and household penetration is only about 50%, which indicates a long runway for growth. So They're really going to be putting their kind of focus in that area. They believe that they have right now a compelling set of consumer lifestyle brands that has scale, and they also are able to kind of outsource the supply chain to help themselves really focus on the brand and the marketing. They've diversified their snacking portfolio with the Quest acquisition. They think they're going to kind of continue that diversification, and they think they have a very broad sales channel availability, which helps them kind of weave in and out or kind of focus and cut some losses in areas where there's difficulty or there's opportunity. So they're not really kind of tied to one area. I would say that they probably have to up their international percentage a little bit here. But overall, I think combining the two companies of Quest and Atkins, they have a pretty good diversified uh, sales channel strategy. They have pretty much coverage everywhere. I would say there's probably some that they still have a ton of runway with, but they do have it pretty spread out across all the sales channels. And then the recap, a little bit around like the plan strategies of Quest Nutrition by the Simply Good Foods company over 2020. They talked about this when they acquired Quest Nutrition. It seems like they're going to continue with that. 
there's kind of three main principles that they're kind of talking about here. And this is around focus on the core nutrition philosophy. So that's around staying on brand with product innovations, staying fresh with product launches. So continuing to keep that story going with Mindshare, making sure that their product lineup is fresh in the eyes of consumers. And then they're also going to promote a platform kind of overall platform portfolio and cross promoting these other categories. So it's not just bars. It's going to be a matter of, Hey, we have all these other things that fit within a core nutritional platform, a core nutritional philosophy. And we're going to try our best to try to make sure that people know of these as big platform brands and not just a singular hero product. Secondly, around like improved integrated marketing, and this is around like optimizing their mix of in-store trade marketing. So what are they going to spend on promotions and making sure they have the right conversion drivers in store. So when somebody does come in, they can purchase it because it's on coupon or there's some aspect of exposure that's going to help those brands pull off shelf. And then also focusing on building brand uh, digital spends, really focusing on more of the demand driver side of this. So kind of figuring out what's the greatest mix to optimize between demand and conversion drivers, while they're also going to be looking at kind of bigger picture marketing spends with Quest Nutrition on the TV ads and celebrity endorsers. So talked about before where they had 2.7 million, I think, earmarked for endorsements and ambassadors. Quest Nutrition does not have like a main person. They don't have a Rob Lowe. And I've mentioned this in a previous video that I like Blake Lively. And I don't necessarily know that Blake Lively would even be available for this. It's just something that from a personality standpoint and just kind of things that she's into and, and just fit wise, I feel like it would be a great fit for Quest Nutrition. So we'll see if they do go out and find that person to front Quest Nutrition, if they even think they need that, or if it's going to be a bunch of little um, kind of micro celebrities or things like that. But we'll kind of see over this year how Simply Good Foods is looking at making sure that Quest Nutrition has kind of bigger media ambitions and having the right person in front of it. Third focus was around like disciplined distribution, which is a little bit unique in terms of the categories that Quest Nutrition is playing in. You really can't control distribution like maybe if you are really heavy on caps, powders, and pills, but they're looking to get velocity in existing sales partners. Um, that includes digital. I think Quest Nutrition is a great brand for a lot of digital sales. They're also focused on increasing doors in some of the unpenetrated food drug and mass channels and they're just kind of scouring the market for some new growth opportunities as a whole now the simply good foods company believes that they are uniquely positioned as a u.s leader in nutritional snacking after the quest nutrition acquisition has kind of hit the ground running they've seen how well this is kind of responding within the overall portfolio but what do you guys think do you think that this acquisition is going to produce a billion dollar plus net sales portfolio without them adding another piece? Or do you think this is going to be just another active nutrition acquisition, another brand in the space of active nutrition that has gone wrong? Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to help support me, make sure you guys hit that thumbs up button on this video. If this is the first time you've been introduced to my videos, would love for you guys to be a part of my community by subscribing to my channel. I upload several videos just like this weekly. And if you guys wanna connect further outside of this platform, I do include all of my social media links down below. I just wanna thank you guys again for your time. Hopefully I gave you some value in return and we'll see you guys on the next video.